What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about artificial sweeteners. Now before we start, everyone, just take a nice deep breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. It's gonna be okay. I do this because a lot of you get really angry about artificial sweeteners. Oh, they must be bad for you. I used to be one of you way back in the day. I told people don't drink diet soda. It's basically the same thing as regular soda and it probably gives you cancer. Back when I was an idiot who didn't actually read the research, I just regurgitated what other idiots said. Fortunately, I have the perspective of hindsight and have read quite a bit of research in the last 20 years. And what you find is that Artificial sweeteners tend to be bad for lab rats who are given 1,000 times the dosage that they are supposed to get. Every human trial, randomized controlled trial we have has failed to show any negative effects of artificial sweeteners. And in fact, some of them actually show better weight loss with people consuming artificially sweetened beverages compared to people just drinking water. I'm not saying that artificial sweeteners are fat burners, this is simply a satiety effect. But recently, people have started to say, but what about the gut microbiome grow? First of all, this all started uh, probably three years ago, three or four years ago, a study came out looking at sucralose in uh, isolated E. coli cells and showed that sucralose at a super high dose was toxic to isolated cells in a Petri dish. whoop dee freaking do. I don't want to poo-poo in vitro research. In vitro research is important for isolating out mechanisms to further explore to see if there are negative effects in the whole body. We have human randomized control trials, animal randomized control trials, and in vitro research. In vitro, down here, okay, down here. Again, not a bad thing. You can do stuff in vitro that you simply can't do in a human being. You can take a lot more measurements. There's, there's a lot of stuff you can do, but it's not a person, okay? Newsflash, if you take amino acids and put them on isolated cells, a lot of times they're toxic. So taking a high dose of an isolated compound and putting them directly on cells means very, very little. Now, if you have in vitro research that also has animal research to support it, along with epidemiological data, and human randomized control trials, now we start to feel very confident that that mechanism may actually cause a problem in humans. So bringing all this up because recently I started getting tagged because there was an article that came out in BBC Science Focus magazine and it's been taken to a bunch of other magazines titled, Artificial Sweeteners Can Turn Healthy Gut Bacteria Into Pathogens. Oh! No! God. Well, just based on that title, I'm going to share that to Instagram, talk to everybody about how I've been wrong about diet sodas and that we all need to give them up because I'm not actually going to read. Oh, that's what everybody else does. So I'm actually going to read the article. So it says, artificial sweeteners can potentially turn healthy bacteria, emphasis on potentially, in the gut microbiome into harmful microbes and potentially cause serious health issues such as blood poisoning, scientists have said. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If it was causing blood poisoning, don't you think we would just have like people just dropping dead left and right from freaking blood poisoning? And this hasn't been picked out in the short and long-term randomized control trials in humans? Hmm. Anyway, UK researchers have found that sugar substitutes such as saccharin, sucralose, and aspartame found in soft drinks and processed foods can cause beneficial bacteria in the intestines such as E. coli. I'm going to butcher this and E. faecalis, faecalis, and E. faecalis to become pathogenic. So it says they can, cause, they can cross the gut wall and enter the bloodstream, which can lead to a life-threatening condition known as blood poisoning, AKA sepsis. Again, randomized controlled trial. Nobody's gotten sepsis in these trials. I haven't even heard of rats getting super high doses getting blood poisoning. So at that point I stopped reading and I said, oh, here's a link to the actual freaking paper. So I went, to the actual freaking paper and read it because that's what like real scientists do. They actually read research, not just read headlines and share, 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 share. 
Okay, and the title of the paper is Artificial Sweeteners Negatively Regulate Pathogenic Characteristics of Two Model Gut Bacteria. Again, these are in essentially petri dishes. These, this is in vitro research. The good thing about this research is they didn't use a crazy, crazy dose in terms of concentration. But again, the idea that you are taking a substance and directly applying it to the cell line is making a lot of assumptions. Once again, we have a myriad of randomized control trials with artificial sweeteners in actual human beings, links in description, showing no negative effects. And certainly nobody just falling over from sepsis and a bacterial infection in their blood. Additionally, there was a recent randomized control trial examining the effects of artificial sweeteners on the gut microbiome directly in, wait for it, humans. And they basically showed that in the amounts they consumed, there was no effect. There was no effect. Now, I want everybody right now, I realize you're all feeling very triggered. Uh, many of you, you anti-artificial people, apparently you walk around in cloths made from the skins of animals that you killed. And you don't drive cars. You don't use cell phones because, whoa, artificial. I want you to take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. Artificial sweeteners are bad for you based on the plethora of research data. And you know what? If we start to have randomized clinical data come out showing that artificial sweeteners are bad, I will recant my position. But they've been doing RCTs on this stuff for, oh, I don't know like 40, 50 years. Aspartame in particular is one of the most studied compounds in the world. And people have dug and dug and dug. And the best they can do is in in vitro and in animals when we give a thousand times the normal dose. And here's this epidemiological data showing that obese people tend to consume artificial sweeteners more than non-obese people. That's what they got. That's the best they got. Zero randomized control trials demonstrating that it causes negative health outcomes in, wait for it, humans! All right, guys, I am sure the comments are gonna be fun on this one. I have cited my sources in the description. Unlike many of you who say that artificial sweeteners are bad for you, you, you don't cite your sources because then people would have to go click on it and they'd see it's in rats or they'd see that it's in a Petri dish. So I cite my sources. You can go read them for yourselves. Hope you guys have a great week and I will catch you next week.